Thanks for joining me today for episode two of Business in the Bedroom, a bootstrapper's guide to doing it. I'm your host, Jemmy Lagonier, and today I'm going to talk to you about how you're your own worst naysayer. This episode is brought to you by Flintstone Media. Listen in and let's do this. All right, so we are about to get into it and why you are your own worst naysayer. But before we do, I want to make sure that you have listened to episode one, because episode one is where I get you to write down or at least start to write down your why. And that is super essential. So you have to make sure that you do that first. So if you're just catching this podcast on episode two, please rewind back and start with episode one. It is critical. So just like there's no one who can motivate you quite like yourself, you can just as easily be your own worst critic, also known as the imposter syndrome. And you might be very familiar with the imposter syndrome. And I'm sure that imposter syndrome is something that you have heard of and experienced and put on yourself in the past. And so we're going to get all into it in this episode. And I found a tweet recently put out there by Dr. Lauren S. Hallian. And she wrote, do you actually have imposter syndrome? Or Is it just that you've spent much of your life having your knowledge and skills subtly dismissed and devalued? That is excellent food for thought, and I happen to agree with her. But I'd like to also say that that is exactly what imposter syndrome is, except that it's when it comes from yourself, subtly dismissing and devaluing your own knowledge and skills. Maybe it happens when you question yourself before sending an email with a proposal to that potential client you really, really wanted to land. Or maybe it comes just before hitting the stage to give that conference presentation you've been working for months on. Or maybe like me, it takes you months upon months to finally convince yourself that you have experience worth sharing on the microphone and getting back into that chair and launching that podcast Finally, finally, (laughs) whatever you call it, you're the worst. (laughs) Not at what you do, but about how you talk to yourself. Or I don't know, maybe you're fabulous. I do know that you're fabulous. And you never, ever, ever, ever have a moment, even a quiet, hidden, alone in the middle of the night moment of doubting yourself. Well, then congratulations. If you're part of what I can only imagine is like 1% of 1% of the people listening to this, then feel free to skip right ahead. You'll find this episode completely boring. (laughs) If, however, you are not like the 1% of the 1% and you're instead like me and like most, you are your own worst critic. And you are very, very guilty of getting in your own way. And just like I did on episode one, I found a really, really great clip from the same episode of Curve the Cube, episode 114, being relentless in your pursuit, that really, really speaks to this. So here's that clip. And again, please in advance, forgive the audio quality. Not my best. I was still early in my podcasting days. As another example... I was never too afraid to go after some really high target guests for the show, even very early on. At least I never let that fear stop me from asking anyway. I just reasoned that my potential guest was already not on my show. So the worst thing that can happen is that they continue to not be on my show. And what difference does that make, right? So I would really have nothing to lose and then decide instead to figure out how to approach people rather than worrying about whether or not I should. But I also need to say, don't be afraid to hear no. Because yes, rejection can be a four-letter word, and it can be awful. (laughs) But if you're going to have any kind of success in life, rejections, well, it's just part of the game you're going to have to get used to. It's like, it's like a, a bug bite or ripping off a bandage. It stings for a minute, but you can quickly move on. If you are too afraid of no to try, well, you're giving yourself a red light before you even have a chance to start. So there it is. And let me tell you, 
As someone who has earned the trust of many, many clients who are professionals of various sorts trying to make it in a multitude of ways, people of literally every personality and from every walk of life, people who trust me to let their walls down and to show me their moments of vulnerability, this is you. This is all of you, we have, except for that 1% of 1%. We are all guilty of getting in our own way, of subtly dismissing and devaluing our own knowledge and skills. We have to stop that. I love my clients and I love when they let me in. I'm a caregiver at heart, which you'll get to know more as we go along here, I'm sure. And I appreciate people's vulnerable side. It's an honor whenever I get to interview someone or work with someone to see what I know is often kept hidden. And I work with some of the most accomplished people in their field, some people who are on Hall of Fame lists and who've been on couches on television shows that you've been admiring since you were a kid. Like, some amazing accomplished people I've had a chance to work with and none of them believe in themselves all the time. It's a farce. Don't believe it. I sure as heck don't. So in case you didn't pick it up earlier, I was the one <laughs> who took months upon months upon months to finally convince myself to start talking shop about business again. I mean, Hours and hours of client calls and free consultations and side chats at conferences where people trusted me over and over again to hear their problem and help them think through a solution. I mean, damn it. If everyone else saw my business chops, why couldn't I? If all of my clients, team members, associates, if everybody I was working with, if the success of my business itself, all of that, all of it, are all clues <laughs> what should have given me unwavering confidence, but it didn't. So I get it. I get that voice in your head because I have her too. She sucks. <laughs> but we all have it. Why are we like this? Why? I don't actually know. Okay. I'm not, I'm not a psychologist, though that was my favorite subject throughout school because I think people's minds are fascinating. What I do know is what I've seen anecdotally. Okay. We are all so afraid of one or sometimes even both sides of the same coin. We fear either the failure or we fear the success, sometimes both. Let me be extra real here. Okay. I literally just looked over my shoulder like someone was listening. In. Like This is a really private conversation, but let me be extra real, okay? I warn you. <laughs> so I've been afraid of being happy. I've never thought that I was allowed to be happy. Maybe at some point I'll get into fully like why, but that's me in a nutshell, okay? I have never thought I was allowed to be happy. I'll work harder than anybody I know. And I've seen what it looks like to actually get what I've worked so hard for. So I don't know what my problem is. Like I said, I kind of do. And I'll digest it another time. But, <laughs> but I just can't stop doubting myself. And by the way, also on a psych note, this podcast is in part kind of my way to make myself publicly accountable and not allow myself to talk myself out of my own accomplishments anymore because it really sucks when I do that. And I need to break that habit just like you, please, please. <laughs> so I never promised this podcast would be all business. Subtitled be a little bit of therapy when I dive into my own mind. You have to forgive me when I do that every once in a while, but there it is. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sure you can relate to it, though. So what do we do about it? What do we do? Well, first off, acknowledge that it's happening to you, right? Admission is half the battle or whatever that famous phrase is. Then acknowledge that it's happening not just to you, okay? You're not alone. It's me too. It's any other person who's listening to this. It's that friend who you're thinking about right now sharing this podcast with, right? Because you're totally thinking about sharing this podcast with a whole bunch of people who feel the same way and do the same thing. Then acknowledge that you're doing it to your damn self. Now, I'm not talking about that feeling that you get after the 18th rejection letter for your book or the 10th time you try to get a backer for your investment. No, I'm talking about what you can control. 
that voice inside yourself that keeps you from sending out your book to that 19th publisher or to a friend to get a fresh perspective or or that voice that keeps you from sending the proposal out to that 11th potential investor or taking a hard look at the numbers again yourself and seeing where did you go wrong and maybe you can fix it, right? Don't get in your own way. Whatever else is going on in the world, in your industry, in your own house even, if it's something outside of your control, it is what it is. Press on. Do what you have to do. There has been a lot thrown at us, all of us, during this last year. It's been awful. But some of that awful may even be the very reason why you're trying to do your own business from the bedroom. And it's what found you here. So you're not alone. We all have to retool somehow and keep going in this new, new, I refuse to say new normal. Dang it, I just said it. But we all have to figure out a way to retool and keep going. So how do you stop getting in your own way? Well, remember to go back to your why. And if you haven't listened to episode one, go back to that, okay? Remember to go back to your why. That's why that was my first episode. And if you missed episode one, shame on you. I mean, I forgive you officially, but shame on you. Go back and listen. But yes, remember to go back to your why. In fact, both the clip that I played in this episode and the clip from Curve the Cube that I played in episode one both came from episode of that show, number 114. And that entire episode is just jam-packed with tips all across the topic of being relentless and just how to keep going. So check out the whole thing, whatever space, whatever place you're at right now in your life and in your journey of doing your business from the bedroom, check out episode 114 of Curve the Cube. And I'll actually include a link right there in the show notes of this episode so you can find it super easy. Another thing you can do is to ask your friends for your why. I was recently talking to a client who really, really wanted to start a podcast, but she was on the fence about whether she really had anything valuable to offer on a podcast, even though I knew she did, even though I knew the client who referred her to me totally did. She just was having a hard time convincing herself because she's her own worst naysayer. So I was blunt and I said that I barely knew her, but I could see her potential. I could see it. But because I barely knew her, we had really just met, I was the absolute wrong person to answer the question for her about whether or not she should start a podcast and whether or not she had anything valuable to offer on a microphone. So instead, I said that she should be asking those who do know her the most, her friends and her family, her colleagues, her clients, and without context, just ask what they think they tune into her show to hear. And make sure that it's not a list of only people who just like always want to compliment you and tell you you're great at everything. Like make sure it's people who really know you and are going to be very clear and honest with what they think you have to offer and what kind of things they'd love to hear you talk about. And don't give them context and say, hey, I think I'm doing a podcast on this. Just say you're thinking about doing a podcast and ask them what they think you should be talking about. And then just take in their answers, right? What would they want to tune in to you and hear? That's what I said to her. And she did that. And she took their answers. And they were a great place for her to start to understand her own value. And that applies to not just starting a podcast, but figuring out why you want to write a book or why you want to create that invention to start that business or do whatever it is that you want to do. As you're starting to write your why list down, you also need to understand the full potential of what you bring to the table. And sometimes in order to get that honest answer, you need to ask other people who aren't you. (laughs) Okay, just take in their answers. It's a great place to start so you can understand why whatever you're thinking about doing is valuable, why it's desired, and why it's needed out there in the universe. And then just do it. (laughs) Just do it. Actually, one of the biggest reasons why people stop from doing it is they just get in their own way. You know, we want to get out of our own way. And one of the reasons why we tend to get in our own way is because we want the idea to be perfect before we start it. 
And I want to tell you to throw that idea right out the window and instead do something that a really great friend of mine recommended. He recommends just to start ugly. So a friend of mine named Chris Kermitzos wrote a great book called Start Ugly. It's a timeless tale about innovation and change. And this book, it's like one of those you can read it in an afternoon and it'll speak to you for the rest of your life. It's about how you don't want to wait for all the edges to be smoothed out. You just have to start rough, start ugly, and just start and just get going. So whatever ideas you have in your head right now, that's the long list of why not, Take those ideas and cross them out. Write your list of whys, cross out all the ideas of why not, and just start. So per episode one, start writing your list of whys, and per this episode two, start crossing out your list of why nots. Thanks for tuning in. I'm assuming you are listening to this because you're either running a business in your bedroom or you're thinking about it. Well, I want to hear from you. Email me about your business and send me your questions at jemmy at flintstonemedia.com. That's jemmy spelled J-A-I-M-E at flintstonemedia.com. Then join the conversation by looking up Dreamers Become Doers on Facebook. It's a really, really awesome group in there. And I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well as Flintstone Media. And for sure, Show notes and details about today's show, head to bizinthebedroom.com. That's bizinthebedroom, spelled B-I-Z, in the bedroom.com. And remember to hit it hard, keep the lights on. Flintstone Media has been the digital messaging bedrock of several brands and businesses, serving as a highly resourceful podcast production house and consultancy firm for over six years. Work with a leader in the industry and add a new podcast to your brand's content offerings. From show development and setup through recording and distribution, Jemmy will lend her experience launching dozens of podcasts and producing over a thousand episodes, making creating your show a simple and easy turnkey process for you. Visit FlintstoneMedia.com for podcast samples. That's FlintstoneMedia.com.